Welcome back to the channel guys. In last week's video we started a series of saddle hunting videos and I promised you I was going to give you five ways to stay more comfortable when you're out in the saddle. On the importance of being able to be comfortable especially when you're talking about this time of year. Right now we're in the peak of the rut and if you've got an opportunity to be out there all day long this is one of the main reasons that you want to stay comfortable in your saddle so that you can make them all day sits. We're going to dive right into this video. We're going to give you the five things that will help you be able to stay out longer. We're going to start out with number one and that's going to be choosing the right saddle. I'm going to tell you right now there's a lot of saddle makers out there if you look at this saddle that I have. This is the Lone Star Saddle and it's made by Latitude Outdoors. Guys this actually has some of the technology built in into it. If you guys have watched my other video where I talk about things that I made a mistake on when making my own saddle, everything that I cover in that video is basically corrected and spot on with the Latitude Outdoors and one of them being comfort. So we're going to talk about that real quick. It actually has a hip pitch technology built into it and basically it's a little bar that's built into the side over here and I believe it to be Kydex, I don't know, some kind of thick plastic, and I'll show in some details of this, how it works. But essentially that hip, pick, that hip pinch technology that's built into this saddle makes it super comfortable. The next thing that I've talked about, especially talking about this particular saddle, is after you get it broke in, it feels like you're wearing a deer skin glove. I also want to preface this and say this, just because I love this saddle doesn't mean it'd be right for you. So what I'm going to say is do your homework, do your research, but pick out a good quality saddle. You need one that's going to be comfortable and you need one that's got some adjustability to it so that you can make these small adjustments that we're fixing to talk about to make your hunt much better. One of the other things, just briefly, and I'll go ahead and tell you about this saddle aside from the hip pinch technology on the interior of this saddle. It actually has some cooling material. Most of y'all know that I'm in deep east Texas. It gets hot out here. So at the beginning of deer season, we may be seeing temperatures up in the 90s. I can tell you that the cooling technology that they have built into this works very nice because I didn't have a wet rear when I was done hunting. One of the number one things that you're going to hear when you're looking at forum topics, people are constantly asking, hey, which is the best saddle out there? Again, don't go by my opinion. Don't go by what I'm saying. Do some more research. I know that Buzzard Roost, it's a company here out of Louisiana. Theirs is one of the most comfortable saddles from all the reviews that I've read. The next company that I've read a lot of good reviews on is going to be Cruiser and I believe it's called the XC. It's supposed to be real comfortable. My brother Durrell, he's really my buddy, but I call him my brother. He's actually got one. I just haven't had the opportunity to sit in his yet and he's bragged about how comfortable it was for him. So again, do your research and don't go by one person. If one person tells you, hey, this is absolutely the best, it may be the absolute best for him, but that don't mean it's going to work for you. That's why we've got so many different bow manufacturers. They all do something a little bit different and it's up to the individual. While we're talking about it, and this is something that you're not seeing in a lot of other people's videos, but we're going to zoom in on this real quick. If, you, if you're in an area where you can legally have this green multi-tool, if you know what it is, there's no explanation needed. But one thing I'll tell you, if you're used to carrying your multi-tool on your hip and you go and put your saddle on <laughs> and you're dangling in the tree, that's going to be putting a lot of pressure on your hip and trust me when I say this, you're not going to enjoy it. So that may be something else that you want to consider aside from your clothing when you're actually getting dressed. <laughs> a big tree just fell. If you're actually in your clothing and you're getting, you're getting dressed to go out and go hunting, clothing is another big one. Try to wear stuff that's actually going to be loose that you can move around in. Again, we're talking about comfort and things you can do to make it longer throughout the day. And that goes with your pants and anything that you might have along with your keys. If you've got a big thick wallet in your back pocket or you're like me and you're used to carrying your phone in your back pocket, 
find another place to carry that thing because once you get up in the tree and you're dangling that's going to be hard to get to and it's also going to cause hot spots or pressure points the next thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about padding and some things that you can use when i originally built this saddle i and i've told several people that it it worked out great it saved me a ton of money i was able to make it myself the problem was is I was getting significant hip pinch. So one of the things that I did, and I haven't seen this on any other video, is I made some hip pads. These work very similar to like what you would see a football player wearing. They're a little bit cumbersome. You almost need three hands to get them tucked in, but it does help significantly. So padding is a big one. The next thing while we're talking about padding, and I've watched several videos where guys are talking about knee pads being optional. I'm going to tell you this. When I'm up in the saddle, I know I spend as much time standing as I do kind of in that setting position. When you're in that setting position, you can actually use your knee pads to rest up against the tree. Guys, these are priceless. They're not only something that I use while I'm saddle hunting, I use them going through the field. If you're walking to your tree that you're going to put your saddle in and some deer are approaching you, you can actually kneel down real quick on your knees and you're not getting stickers in your knees you're not getting mud in your knees if you're blessed and you do get a harvest now you don't have your knees on the ground when you're down there starting to do the field dressing and then i also use them all around camp you can tell these things are getting wore out all the plastic the extra heavy duty stuff's broke off putting st uh, putting your stakes in for your tent you're not getting down on your knees and getting stickers in your knees there's a lot of uses that just people are overlooking when they're talking about the knee pads to me again that's another thing that helps you with your comfort if you're on a budget make your own knee pads they're really cheap this is just some velcro and a yoga mat that's chopped up cut it just to fit over my knee I wore these for several years and I lost one that's the only reason I got out the other ones the next thing that we're going to talk about when we're talking about all day sits or or just staying comfortable long enough to get a good hunt in is going to be the adjustments that you can make this saddle come with an adjustable bridge which means that it comes with basically a Prusik knot on this side right here that way you can adjust this length in and out what I'm going to tell you is there's a lot of adjustability just within the bridge itself. You can make this shorter, you can make it longer, you can also adjust your tether height higher or lower, and that's going to put different pressure points. The next thing that I want to point out is where your saddle is sitting on your body. You can also make small adjustments here as well by pulling your saddle up a little bit or pushing it down and getting it into that comfortable spot. And then lastly, one of the other things you can do, which will kind of help shift the weight from your back to the bottom of your legs, is these little Prusik knots that go where your bridge is attached to your saddle have a little bit of adjustability upwards or downwards. The one thing that I do want to say, and I, I can't emphasize this enough, especially when it comes to comfort of your saddle, is this. This is no different than shooting your bow. You need to get out there, you need to practice with it, you need to get comfortable with it, you need to find a system that works for you. When you're making the different adjustments and you're trying to get the ultimate comfort out of your saddle, do yourself a favor. Only make one adjustment at a time. So say your hips are a little bit uncomfortable and you decide that you want to move your, your tether height a little bit. Make that one chain. Don't move the tether and the bridge at the same time. Only move one at a time, and if that didn't work, moving your tether height didn't work, then maybe try moving your bridge and leave your tether where it was. If that doesn't work, move where it's pulling on your points of your saddle. If that doesn't work, try the hip pads. If that doesn't work, <laughs> one of the last things that I want to show you guys, and I made this, today just specifically for this video and this is going to be my version of essentially spreader there's guys that are making these commercial quality way much better if you guys do decide to make something similar to this use oak don't use popular because it's probably going to break just consider 
this being a possibility, especially if you're having hip pinch. But the way this is going to work is it's going to slide in here like that. And then when you're in your saddle, you can put these little bungee cords so that, that doesn't pop for out. And that's going to hold your saddle open. And the whole idea behind that spreader bar is you're actually going to be spreading your saddle out a little bit and that should help eliminate the hip pinch as well. I didn't make this so much for the hip pinch because I'm extremely comfortable in this saddle. What I made it for is this quick connect. I can put my DJI camera on here or my cell phone. And I'm really excited. We're going to be taking you guys hunting on public land again here soon. And we're going to be using the cell phone mounted to this along with the DJI camera, taking our pick, figuring out what it is we like the most about it. As we recap and we kind of go into the conclusion of this, I want to say this, guys, the biggest thing that you want to do is make one adjustment at a time. By making one adjustment at a time, it's going to help you understand more about your saddle and your body and the way it fits you. And it's just like if you were trying to sight in your bow for the first time and you were moving the left and the right and the up and down on your bow sight all at once, you're not ever going to really it's going to take you much longer to figure out what it is you need to do. And that's a whole nother video. We're going to be starting bow hunting 101 soon. They're going to follow up after we get done with these saddle hunting videos. Probably one of the biggest downsides to saddle hunting is the cost of it. If you guys have been checking into the saddles, that's why we only have one saddle. I've made one and I saved up my money and finally purchased another one. I'd absolutely love to do a video using the Buzzard Roost or the Cruiser XC. I just don't have the funding to make that happen. If you guys are ever out in the woods and you're hunting, here's your quick tip. You hear the crows? If you hear the crows making a bunch of racket like that, they're tattling on somebody. More than likely, they're talking about me and my wife out here right now. They do not like us being in their acorn patch. <laughs> Take note of that. They do the same thing to the deer. As I was saying, one of the biggest obstacles into the saddle hunting is going to be the cost to get in. Hopefully in this video I've shown you some things that you could potentially make yourself that you could use that would help you with your comfort, especially when you're talking about an all-day sit. I think this little bridge spreader that'll hold my camera may actually be pretty something pretty cool as well. I'll come back with you on that and let you know what my final thoughts are at towards the end of the season, but I am going to be using this along with a regular camera arm for our video camera while we're trying to get you some more good hunting videos. Ultimately, like any other thing, a saddle is no different than a mountain bike. If you're going to get out on your mountain bike and you haven't ridden it all year and you go on a 20 mile ride on your mountain bike, by the end of the day, you're probably going to barely be able to walk the next day. Same thing with the saddle. Same thing with lots of things. Same thing with a kayak. If you go kayak 10 miles at the end of that next day, you probably ain't going to be able to move. Practice with this thing throughout the year. Get comfortable. Get used to it. Mountain bike seats were never known to be the most comfortable, but the more you ride your mountain bike, it's part, of, it's just like a glove and it's part of the system and you get used to it. And that's ultimately how you get away from all the pains and things that cause you discomfort. As a little bonus round, I do want to say this, psychologically, we can cause ourselves some discomfort. That to me is another thing that I love about the saddle hunting is you can get up off the ground. Let's face it, there's a lot of people that are hunting in areas where you've got the wild hogs and when you're seeing wild hog tracks this high up on trees, you know that's a big one. You can hear them screaming in the background, that kind of stuff. When you're up in the air, you don't have that worry. You find yourself a lot more comfortable. The other thing about hanging from the tree, you're connected to the tree from the time you start up your steps till you come down. That provides a level of comfort. And once you get up there and you've got your saddle dialed in, you're going to find yourself so comfortable that you notice that you're hungry and you're thirsty. So don't forget to hydrate. Don't forget to take your snacks. Again, we appreciate each and every one of you. If you found any of this information useful, consider hitting the like button. If you know somebody that's thinking about getting into saddle hunting, again, guys, I don't profess to be the saddle hunting professional in the world. I can just tell you I've been hunting out of a saddle for about seven years now, and I've got a lot of this stuff dialed in, and that's what helped me pick out 
my saddle that I purchased this year. Until next week's video comes out, consider watching this video right up here. <laughs> this video over here is pretty awesome too. I think you really enjoy it. Man, I don't, man, I, don't, I watch them both. Just make time, watch both of them. I think you guys are gonna love them. Share these videos with your friends, help our channel continue to grow. The more we grow, the more we can do for you guys. And I look forward to seeing you out in the field. And until next week's video comes out, watch one of these. I hope you all have a blessed week and let's get outside, make something happen and watch this one until the next one comes out. I, I love you all, thank you.